and welcome to That's Life. I'm your host, Marcia Boyles, and I'm delighted today to uh, be introducing three new vignettes. We are going to start with uh, a brand new character uh, named Morris Abel, and he's played very, very well by Fred Sachs. Then we're switching to uh, an old character, uh, Wendy, who's played by Gretchen Kitt. We end up with uh, Nancy Gardner, uh, played by Eloise Stinger. My co-host and producer, Kathleen. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good this morning, good, Kathleen. Good, We should say also that you are social work manager. I am, absolutely. Uh, in case you had forgotten. In case I forgot, right. Yes. Um, and Ann Talley is gonna be working with Gretchen um, doing the, um, the role play as, as Gretchen is Wendy. Wendy. Wendy Ford. Wendy Ford. Yes. All right. Well, with that then, we will roll the vignettes. Hi, Mr. Abel. Good to see you. And thank you for, for seeing me. Yeah, sure. Um, I have a strange kind of problem. Ah, oh, my favorite kind. Uh, I've... Uh, I've lived here for approximately a year and a half, mm -hmm. and I seem to have painted myself into a corner. At least I feel as though I have. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, let me tell you what the yeah, problem tell is. Tell me more, yes. Uh, before I moved here, uh, I was invited to a sales luncheon. Uh, I'd already decided <laughs> to move here, but I, was, I went to the luncheon and seated next to me was a resident who was apparently at sales luncheons, residents are there to answer questions. Mm -hmm. uh, a very charming lady and we had a nice conversation. And uh, about three months later, I moved in. Uh, a few weeks after that, I was at the elevator and here came that very nice lady and mm -hmm. we had a nice chat. Uh, and over the next few months, uh, we would meet at different places and talk about Green Spring and things to do and so on. Uh, the problem developed when I thought, you know, I'd like to know this lady a little better. And I thought, well, maybe perhaps take her out to dinner or something. Sounds nice. Uh, well, it was nice, but remember, I'd had no experience for 55 years in m making that kind of a suggestion to Right. So the idea, the, the idea sounded good, but the doing sounded a exactly, little scary, exactly. maybe. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, With a word. And uh, so for a period of time when we'd meet, I'd say, you know, you and I should get together for dinner sometime. Mm-hmm. And she said, uh, it's a good idea, but I didn't know how to do, do it. Do it forward. Uh, so how, when you were sort of trying to figure out what the next step wa was, what, what were you feeling? Well, part of my dilemma is what do I do if she says no thank you? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, you don't want to be rejected. I don't know how to handle that kind of rejection. Oh, I know. Well, you're putting yourself out there after. So you had had been married for. I a had long been married time? for 55 years. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, my experience in dating was a lot longer than that. Right. So. Right. So I thought maybe you could uh, advise Give you me some a little hints, bit. huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the the hardest part is just sort of. Um, taking a risk sometimes, you know, when we when we try something different. Certainly, when it has to do with relationships, you are taking a risk in terms of is this person really going to like me? Are they going to reject me? I would feel bad if I got rejected. But on the other hand, I would imagine that you could think of some really good reasons why you would want to take that risk. Well, I certainly can. I guess the reason I'm feeling as I do is because we live on the same floor. Mm -hmm. We use the same elevator. Yeah. And 
And, uh, oh, it could get complicated, It could huh? get complicated, yes. Yeah, th this is definitely, this setting is a little bit sort of like college, I think, huh? Where exactly. If exactly. it doesn't work out, you're going to be seeing that person on a regular basis. Exactly. But I would think, you know, you're both mature adults, that, you know, maybe that's just part of the conversation at some point that you have is, you know, just what, what are the rules of engagement, that sort of thing. So You don't know what she's thinking either, which is the other that's part. That's true. That's true. She... When I have said we ought to go out to dinner sometime, she smiled mm -hmm. <laughs> and said, "Yeah, good idea." But <laughs> <laughs> so, what's she thinking? Why isn't he actually making a date? <laughs> what's wrong with me? I mean, I'm pretty sure that you know she's probably feeling equally tentative um, well, because just starting a new relationship, and it sounds like you, it's he, you're. Um, relationship is sort of evolving just naturally because you're running into her, yep. you're on the same floor, that sort of thing. Exactly. Um, so it feels kind of natural and organic what's going on. So I, you're suggesting that I just become, become a man and, <laughs> and ask her. <laughs> well, I'm suggesting you do what you want to do. So do you have, what do you want to do? I would like to take her out to dinner. Okay. So in order to do that, you would have to ask her. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, I think maybe just go ahead and bite the bullet and see what happens. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, does that sound like something you're going to try? I will definitely try it. Okay. Well, now you've got a promise to come back and let me know how it went. I will. Okay, right. great. See you later. Right. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Oh, my. Well, I'm glad to be back and up and around. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. So the last time I saw you, your daughter was taking you to the emergency room for that shoulder. And then, of course, I got all the reports and everything that you'd fractured your shoulder. You had the rehab you're back in your apartment. Yeah. yeah. And tell me, how have things been going? Um, slower. Slow. Oh. With more difficulty. Yeah. Tell and, me. Uh, you know, a little more tentativeness about having this big apartment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just seems so much bigger now. Yeah. And more, more trouble. Okay. And uh, I'm less comfortable thinking that that's where I'm going to be forever. I see. Well, let me yeah. see. Let me ask you some questions here. Are, are you getting to dinner, or what are you doing about dinner? Well, I go when I can, but I'm tired that time of day. Even if I try to take a nap in the afternoon, mm -hmm. I don't always make it, even though I have some friends that I've eaten with for years. Okay. But it's it's not the same. Yeah, so you had some home health assistance. I know that and an aid for a little bit. Do you have any help in the apartment no. right now? Not regular. Okay. No. And how are you doing with remembering to take your medications? Well, that seems to be going okay. I lay them out each day, morning and evening, and a couple of, th one thing at lunch and a couple of things in the afternoon. <laughs> but at this point, I think I'm making that okay. Okay. And then as far as taking care of the apartment, are you struggling with that? Are you doing oh, okay? Oh, yeah. No, I just feel as though I, I don't clean, I don't dust. I do try to keep up with my dishes and the meals that I make for myself. It's very simple. Okay. But, um, you know, I'm not motivated to do a lot of creative food work. <laughs> yeah, and how, how's your shoulder? How is it healing? Well, it's uncomfortable, um, especially if I forget and try to lie on that side. Yeah. So I'm still healing. Yeah. 
Well, when you called me, you said you wanted to just talk to me real briefly and get some information about assisted living. Yeah. So I, I have these pamphlets. So I know you wanted to give those to your daughter. So I'd I'm going like to give to these. I'd like to go over them with the yeah. daughter. And I would ask you to give those to your daughter and have okay. her call me if she has any questions. But one of the sure. things I think would be a good idea is for you and your daughter to call the admissions department at Garden Ridge and schedule a tour. Because if oh. you are, because what you're telling me is that you're having trouble keeping up with the apartment, you're kind of lacking some energy, yeah. um, getting to dinner sounds like it's getting to be a little bit of a hassle for you. It's a yeah. little tiring. Yeah. Um, so if you want to just explore the option of looking at assisted living, I would go over that information with her and then schedule okay. that tour at yeah. Garden Ridge. You call the admissions department. Okay. And you and your daughter go take a tour and then you come back and talk to me. Okay. If you're I think interested. That would be good. But at least come back and talk to me either way. Let me know what you think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, well it's good to see you. That'll be good. All right. Take Appreciate care. Appreciate it. Hi, Nancy. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, Kathleen, but thank you for seeing me again. Yeah. I really need some guidance. You may remember that I was going to tell my family about my diagnosis of Parkinson's mm -hmm. disease at the holidays, and I didn't tell couldn't them. Couldn't do it, huh? I couldn't do it. It was just wonderful to be together, um, to have one more time when I wasn't the focus of attention, when they weren't worried about me. Uh, it was the last time I felt like we would have a normal holiday. Wow. I know. I know. Maybe that's, that's overstating a lot of, that's it. That's a lot of pressure on <laughs> but yourself. But it was. No uh, wonder you didn't say I anything. I just didn't want to you deal with like it. You felt like it was just going to like explode I just the wanted holiday. To, yes. I didn't want to change it. I For wanted sure. it to be good. Yeah. So, and I have developed another uh, symptom. I have a slight tremor in my hand, uh, which is hard as a writer. That's also oh, a difficulty. Right. But, um, I know it's the time has come. I have to talk with them. Yeah. But I don't know how. You don't know how. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, are you thinking you want to bring them together as a group or talk to them individually? I think I have to bring them all together. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that if I did it individually, they'd hear different things. They'd ask different questions. I'd just have to repeat it over and over. And there would just be too much back and forth among the children talking about mom's problem. I'd yeah. rather have it all at once. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think they know anything yet. Yeah, I agree. I think it's mm -hmm. a good idea to just sort of have everybody mm -hmm. hear the same message. Right. They might take away, take different things away, mm -hmm. but still to be able to hear it all at one time makes sense. So what's, what's your biggest worry in, in telling them? That our relationship will change. Mm -hmm. I've always been the strong, independent, person. I've always taken care of them. I don't want to be the one that they feel they have to take care of. I don't want them to be watching me for symptoms. I don't, I just want it to be the way it used to be. And once I tell them, then it's real. It's real. Yep. Once you say it, then that makes it true. It, I can't go back. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think I hear what you're saying about worrying that you're, you know, all of a sudden, instead of being who you are, mom, mm -hmm. and, and um, all of the things that they know about you, that you're now all of a sudden going to be somebody different mm -hmm. with this Parkinson's diagnosis and possibly these, these physical problems, and you're worried about how that's going to impact your relationships yes, with your kids. absolutely. Yeah. I don't worry about it as much with people here because we've all learned to live with whatever it is we deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm not as concerned about my friends, but I'm, they don't depend on me. I guess that's what it is, the same way that a family does. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's scary because mm -hmm. what this situation is almost forcing you into is really taking that next step in terms of being a person to your kids, not just a, a perfect, that perfect mm -hmm. mom who always has everything under control. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe even just the possibility that um, they are going to have to maybe take care of you yes. and that there's going to be some shifting. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, 
So I think that you have to have faith in your kids that they're ready for that too, and you're ready yeah. for that. It's me. I'm not ready. You're not I ready. I think my children. I don't even like it now when they try to help me carry things when I'm perfectly capable of doing it, uh -huh. and they're being respectful and understanding that I'm getting older, and they want to help. Yeah. But I don't want them to. Yet. So what are you reacting to then? What do you not think? being who I always have been to them, and. Uh, not being in control. Not being in control. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. <laughs> All right. That's a big one, huh? Yeah. 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 Having to maybe mm -hmm. be seen as less uh -huh. than you perceive yourself to be. Someone vulnerable. Be. Someone yeah, vulnerable. Yeah. Vulnerable. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, that, those and are scary. Hard. Those that's are really, hard thing really, to deal really with. scary mm -hmm. things. Yeah. yeah. Now, I've, I know that initially I said I was had no interest in the Parkinson support group. I really. Mm -hmm. Now, the more I think about it, I perhaps it would be better. I need your advice. Yeah. Perhaps it would be better if I actually did attend a meeting or two to see how other people are dealing with all of this before I talk to my children, so I know how other people have done. I'm not really, it's not really that I'm putting it all No, off. no, I don't <laughs> I think you are. That. You just want to be prepared. I want to be prepared as who, much as possible. I have no idea how they will react. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know which child will be the most upset. I know which one will try to take control and um, handle things, yeah. but it's still, yeah. I don't want to relinquish that. Well, I don't know that you're going to have to, but mm -hmm. I know that you're worrying about that. Mm -hmm. But I think that going to the Parkinson's group could be a, a good idea mm -hmm. for you, even just in the sense of having people um, that have had a similar experience to be able to, uh, to talk it through with, mm -hmm. and even just sort of practicing, um, you know, expressing that vulnerability mm -hmm. and expressing... Um, this reality to to somebody, um, I think that it's a big first step mm -hmm. for you in terms of just being able to to accept, you know, that this really? is something else in your life that you're going to have to be dealing with. It doesn't make you any less of a person. Um, you're not the diagnosis. You're still exactly yeah. who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and if people, I mean, if it is about vulnerability. You know, it is about not being perfect mm -hmm. and. That's a hard one for anybody. Very hard, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I think that might be a good first start for you. Do I need to sign up? Do I need to, t I mean, I understand, do you? I'm actually, okay. yep, I'm actually the group facilitator. Mm -hmm. So it's the fourth Thursday, and I can send okay. you an email oh, or something thank you. letting right. you know. Mm -hmm. But um, it's the fourth Thursday of every month, mm -hmm. um, and it's in the town center classroom from 1.30 to 2.30. Okay. Um, there are people that have had um, a Parkinson's diagnosis for a long time, but also people that have just had the okay, had the diagnosis helpful. more mm -hmm. recently. So people, you know, experiencing all different kinds of mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> things in terms of the s sort of the symptoms that they're having, but mm -hmm. also struggling with the the different emotions that we have as we change, okay. um, as our as our capabilities change. Uh -huh. So it would be something I think that would help me um, deal with telling my family, my yeah. children. Yeah, I think so. And then after I tell them initially, initially I'd want them all to be together mm -hmm. and to talk to them. After that, would it be possible, even if I could only bring one of my children in, to talk with you about what I can expect. I mean, I know I'd have to do that through an, my neurologist and so mm -hmm. forth, but just if I'm having dif difficulty explaining it all, yeah, of would course. you be willing? Yeah, of course. I mean, if it's the, the medical piece, then I would mm -hmm. definitely right. encourage mm -hmm. you. Sometimes it's really good to have, if you have one particular child that maybe is more mm -hmm. medically inclined. It, the one who has my uh, medical power of, power of attorney perfect. would be the person. Yeah, that would be mm -hmm. perfect. To have her maybe start attending doctor's appointments uh -huh. with you is right. not a bad idea because mm -hmm. um, she might ask questions that you yes. wouldn't Yes, and I know that I will, my mind will freeze. Right. I, I won't hear everything. Um, yeah, that's so why we actually, else. yeah, we actually encourage mm -hmm. people to, to take somebody with them just for that reason. Right. Um, but then as far as just 
the the emotional part, mm -hmm. um, I I would be more than willing to that would to be help absolutely you. wonderful. Are yeah. you you said that there's one child in particular that you're kind of worried about how she's going to react? She's the most emotional. Mm -hmm. She's the most emotional. But if everyone hears it at once, it'll be. And I think uh, that they'll I mean they'll support mm -hmm. each other as well. Yes. So uh, everybody, if I know you, I don't know your kids directly, but you're strong, you're resilient, you're also honest, um, and this is not going to be easy, mm -mm. and there's definitely going to be tears, and there's definitely going to be a sense of discomfort, mm -hmm. but you guys are going to move forward on it. Your relationship's going to change, but that doesn't mean it's going to change for the worst, because it's going to evolve to be even better and stronger than it was I'm before. I'm just going to have to accept that I'm that I do need help, or I might need help, or I will need help. Yeah, well, you just have to accept that mm -hmm. um, there are people out there that love you and want to mm -hmm. help you. Mm -hmm. And perhaps there are things that they can help me do that will help me uh, deal with it as far as, I don't, I don't even know, exercise, yeah. healthy eating, whatever. They would do yeah. that, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. They would go for mm -hmm. walks with you or whatever, and that would be good for them, yes. too, because yeah. then they would mm -hmm. feel like they were right. able to do mm -hmm. something. Um, but yeah, absolutely. This is going to be a good thing. Just the doing of it it's, is going to be a good thing. It's going to be very hard, but I know it's gonna, I know there's no choice. It's gonna, but it's yeah. also going to be a relief that mm -hmm. you don't even uh, you have been putting yourself under an awful lot of stress just not talking about it. Mm -hmm. So That's true. I hadn't thought about yeah, it that. So way. there will be some mm -hmm. relief there mm -hmm. for you. I guarantee you. Okay. All right, good. Thank you. So you'll come back after you have the conversation with your kids and let me know how it went? I think first I'd like to come. Oh, that's to right. You want yeah, to come I would prefer to come. Speak. Okay. I, I mean, not yeah, that I, I prefer, that but I think sense. it's the right thing for me to do. I think it will give me some guidance, some I ideas agree. of what I should, how I should handle I it. I agree. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's what you'll do, and then you'll get then ready I'll, to talk to your kids. Yes. And and then I will. And we'll come see back. how yeah. things are. And I'll be seeing you anyhow, yeah. I'm sure. Thank you so much for making Absolutely. it a little less stressful. Yeah. And by the way, the breathing breathing exercises that you showed me a while ago have helped. They're magic, aren't yes, they? Yes, they are. <laughs> so good. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome back. Kathleen, once again, interesting vignettes. Uh -huh. um, and very touching, I thought. Um, what theme did you pick up today? You always <laughs> manage to always find a theme. I always have a theme, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think this one had a little bit to do with um, how we risk ourselves in relationships and how we sort of make ourselves vulnerable mm -hmm. by sharing parts of ourselves that we maybe, you know, worry, are, are people going to see us differently? You know, are people going to reject us? Are people going to care about us if they see, like in Nancy's, in Nancy's um, situation, you know, are her children going to think about her differently because now she has that diagnosis? Yes. Or is she going to even, I think, see herself differently in respect to her children because if they're looking at her as if she's somebody that has to be cared about, then that's, she doesn't like, she's not going to like that feeling. So, because you know, relationships are, you know, the emotions go back and forth. So um, so I think that that, for her, I think there's a lot of risk associated with now moving from a parent who's always you know, been in control right. to more really of an, e I mean, these are adult children, but you know, we do always tend to see our children, even when they are as adults, adults as being you know, our, our babies, our kids, and we have to protect them and all of that. So now she's moving into a little bit of a different territory in terms of the relationship. I thought her insight <clears throat> into her own motivation and concerns mm -hmm. was remarkable. Um, do you find this normally with folks? I mean, can, can most people or many people really um, provide their own, some of their own insights at least? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, everybody has that ability to do that. For some, you have to uh, poke, poke them <laughs> a little bit, poke them a little bit more to help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nancy has actually really, really good insight. And certainly your help um, in discussing it and, and giving her further insights, Kathleen, is, is an enormous aid to, 
to her understanding. Yeah, but I'm, um, but I do, you know, you do see even when people sort of intellectually get some of this stuff and understand it, emotionally ends up being a whole different situation because um, that's where you actually have to do something. So that's where the risk, if you, if you intellectually understand it, you're still kind of in a comfort zone. Um, right because you're, you're in control of how you think. But um, when you are now involving other people who are gonna respond in a way that you don't really know how to anticipate, and then you're not gonna know exactly how you're gonna feel when they respond the way that they, they might be respond. So you're so giving complicated. up control. Sure. You're given, it's very mm -hmm. complex, you know. Mm -hmm. human, rela human relationships are very complex, so that's why they're risky. Mm -hmm. And Fred uh, uh, Sachs playing Morris Abel. Mm -hmm. um, this was a this was a lovely introduction to th this new character. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was really interesting to have have um, have him come and just sort of say, you know, I haven't done this for 55 years. I'm thinking about you know venturing forth with a a new relationship and. Uh, I don't know if I remember, I remember, this isn't like getting back on a bike. <laughs> I think I've forgotten how to do this. So, uh, so I thought that was, that was wonderful. And then just, you know, recognizing that, yeah, there, what if you reach out to another person and, you know, they're not as willing, you know, you still have to, and, and again, Greenspring is, is a little different too in that if that, if you, start a relationship with somebody and it doesn't work, you're still going to see that person on a regular basis. So does that, is that going to make you feel uncomfortable or awkward in any kind of a way? But I think that, you know, he, he was pretty clear that he felt the benefits outweighed the risks, which is exactly what you want somebody to feel when they're venturing forth. Um, so I think he, he was ready, to, I felt like he was like gonna get up and walk out the door and just go right out and make sure that she uh, knew that he wanted to take her out. So that was pretty good. Well, you were certainly encouraging him. You may have a whole new role here. <laughs> yeah. um, ad, 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 advice to the love lorn or some such. Yeah, um, that would be okay. You could, you could, you could handle that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, excellent. <laughs> now, is that an invitation to others? No. To, no well, I you know what I, yeah. I say. Relationships are really important. So, yes, if anybody, for sure. you know, is wondering about, you know, reaching out and they're conflicted in any kind of way, then yeah, of course, I can talk them through that. All of the social workers would love that. I see. Well, I think what was also coming up for me when I was watching all this was the the array of of emotions and situations that you probably do as social workers oh. get kind of constantly. Yeah, yeah. Life's a roller coaster. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I guess that's kind of a cliche, but <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> but it's kind very of a much so. Um, it's. Very, I mean, it's. You know, and people are living life. You know, just they just. Keep are just going to keep living life and nobody, I mean we've said this before, nobody ever stops changing, thankfully. Um, well, we don't again, want, we, I mean we wouldn't want people to just sort of say stop, okay, I'm done now. I, I suppose it would be tempting in some cases for folks to say that. Yeah. I think for one thing too, living in a community this closely, um, I think it intensifies relationships, don't you, to yeah. a degree? Well, you're definitely in a bit of a fishbowl. Um, so that's why I, I think I said to, uh, to Morris, it was like uh, almost like college or something, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, what people are going through because everybody's in such close proximity and there is a lot of kind of paying attention. Everybody's sort of paying attention to everybody they else. Are. So th I think that probably intensifies the risk a little bit too, you know. You made a statement once um, to the effect that there are a couple of steps that Green Spring residents skip in their interactions with one another. And I think what you were referring to is that the, the norm, when, on the outside world, mm -hmm. when we meet a stranger uh, or maybe a neighbor down the street, we have certain levels of formality that we go through with one another. Right. And that in Gre at Greenspring, we tend to skip those early st those early stages of pleasantries and formalities. Yeah, I think that um, 
I just think because of the fact that people are so close together and you're seeing people every day and you know you I mean you're seeing people in the hallway people are having a bad day or people are having a good day and somehow you get drawn into that much more quickly than you would you know when you're out in the suburbs or out in the city where people are moving so fast I think there's a I think this is a good thing. I think there's just a real um, sensitivity in the community for one another. It begins to feel more like family, as we've talked about. Yeah. I mean, the, the same kind of, of daily uh, contact, in some cases, um, that we would have with our families. Yeah. I also would like, I also suspect that it may be because we realize we don't have a huge amount of time. And there's no sense, you know, futzing around with, um, some of those early formalities, if we don't, if we can skip them, possibly, yeah. I don't know. I for don't sure. know either, but you know that could be mm -hmm. that could be a benefit as well of getting older, as you know, you just don't bother with exactly all of that stuff that's not essential. You just like you know, let's just do it. <laughs> right, exactly. Get on with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what Morris did. So <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Once he made up his mind, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I like that for sure. Well, it would be interesting to see what happens uh, with, with Morris. Uh, yeah, I, I, I certainly hope he's I not hope rejected. It, I know. I hope it goes well. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll see. Anything else you'd like to, uh, to leave us with? No, I think that was good. I think those were good. I think we really mm -hmm. ran the gamut a little bit in terms of, you know, what our characters were going through at their particular point in their lives. So. Well, as, as we as we have pointed out, um, the gamut is here. Yeah. Um, you see it, we see it. Um, it, it. That's I think very realistic. Yep, I agree. So good show. I think that the mm -hmm. that the um, the characters are uh, changing and growing. Yes. We have a new character. I love that. So anyhow, yes. I hope I hope that people are watching and staying tuned for the next the next thing that happens. In all, in all three of those cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, Kathleen, I do think it was a good show today. Um, and we will close now, and we'll see everybody next month. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Oh, my. Well, I'm glad to be back and up and around. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. So the last time I saw you, your daughter was taking you to the emergency room for that shoulder. And then, of course, I got all the reports and everything that you'd fractured your shoulder. You had the rehab You're back in your apartment. Yeah. yeah. And tell me, how have things been going? Um, slower. Oh. with more difficulty yeah Tell and you. Uh, you know a little more tentativeness about having this big apartment mm -hmm. <laughs> it just seems so much bigger now yeah. and more more trouble okay and uh, I'm less comfortable thinking that that's where I'm going to be forever I see. Well, let me yeah. see. Let me ask you some questions here. Are, are you getting to dinner, or what are you doing about dinner? Well, I go when I can, but I'm tired that time of day. Even if I try to take a nap in the afternoon, mm -hmm. I don't always make it, even though I have some friends that I've eaten with for years. Okay. But it's, it's not the same. Yeah, so you had some home health assistance. I know that, and an aid for a little bit. Do you have any help in the apartment no. right now? Not regular. Okay. No. And how are you doing with remembering to take your medications? Well, that seems to be going okay. I lay them out each day, morning and evening, and a couple of th one thing at lunch and a couple of mm -hmm. things in the afternoon. <laughs> but at this point, I think I'm making that okay. Okay. 
And then as far as taking care of the apartment, are you struggling with that? Or are you doing oh, okay? Oh, yeah. No, I just feel as though I, I don't clean, I don't dust. I do try to keep up with my dishes and the meals that I make for myself. It's very simple. Okay. But, um, you know, I'm not motivated to do a lot of creative food work. <laughs> yeah, and how, how's your shoulder? How is it healing? Well, it's uncomfortable, um, especially if I forget and try to lie on that side. Yeah. So I'm just still healing. Yeah. Well, when you called me, you said you wanted to just talk to me real briefly and get some information about assisted living. Yeah. So I, I have these pamphlets so I know you wanted to give those to your daughter. So I'd I'm going like to give these. I'd like to go over them with yeah. the daughter. And I would ask you to give those to your daughter and have okay. her call me if she has any questions. But one of the sure. things I think would be a good idea is for you and your daughter to call the admissions department at Garden Ridge and schedule a tour. Because if oh. you are, because what you're telling me is that you're having trouble keeping up with the apartment. You're kind of lacking some energy. Yeah. Um, getting to dinner sounds like. It's getting to be a little bit of a hassle for you. It's a yeah. little tiring. Yeah. Um, so if you want to just explore the option of looking at assisted living, I would go over that information whether and then schedule okay. that tour at yeah. Garden Ridge. You call the admissions department. Okay. And you and your daughter go take a tour, and then you come back and talk to me okay. if you're I think interested. That would be good. But at least come back and talk to me either way. And let me know what you think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, well, it's good to see you. That'll be good. All right, take Appreciate care. Appreciate it.